from the Women's Tour of Britain in Tewkesbury. Welcome, Welcome to, to the GCN, GCN Show. Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, what do you need to know to be a cycling genius? We help newcomers get their heads around this overcomplicated pastime. We've also got vlogs from Killian Kelly and Otterley Quint, an update on the epic tour divide, and news of a seven-year-old called Rupert who's cycling from London to Paris to raise money for a cause very close to his heart. This week in the world of cycling, we learned why Primoz Roglic is so good at La Vuelta. Tour de France is preparation for Vuelta. <laughs> that was Roglic in a very humorous mood, having just won the Criterium de Dauphiné for the first time. Yeah, getting better and better in interviews, isn't he? Uh, we also learned after last week's double header of new bikes spotted in the pro peloton that another one broke cover at the Criterium de Dauphiné too. It was a previously unseen canyon and the silhouette looks very similar to the current Ultimate. But when you look closely, there are some subtle changes over the previous one, like the integrated cables. And it'll be interesting to see when it comes out and what we're in store for when it does. It will be. Would you believe that the current model is now seven years old? Uh, finally, this week we learnt or were reminded that cycling is a very complicated sport. Killian Kelly, who is our newbie cyclist who's currently zwifting like mad to get himself prepared for L'Etape du Tour, is also currently trying to get his head around things like gear ratios or why seat posts around and general stuff that you would assume a cycling statistician and general uber nerd would already know. I mean, if a cycling statistician and uber nerd can't get their head around cycling, then what hope is there for the rest of us? Exactly. But then there are so many things that are complicated about cycling or simply don't make sense at all or are just general assumed knowledge. It really is a void of discovery for anybody looking to just get into the sport. That might be a nice way of putting it, but basically it is a minefield of terminology and technology that can take a long time to get your head around. Long time. Like Killian's finding out. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Uh, but what cycling and I guess cyclists are definitely getting better at is not making people feel like idiots for not knowing stuff that can take years to pick up. I mean, it used to be like some kind of secret society, didn't it? Where people would giggle away if they caught somebody wearing their helmet back to front. No, no, I'm going to stop you there. That is funny. Okay, that is still funny. I guess a bit like someone that might use WD-40 as both a degreaser and a lubricant, as Cy did eight years ago. Now for the ultimate cheeks trick. I use WD-40 for the lubricant as well as the degreaser. But back to my point, whilst we are getting better at being more inclusive and not giggling at people, there are still plenty of hurdles to overcome before you truly feel like you know the sport. Yeah, basically, that's all you need to be a cyclist is a bike with ideally two working brakes, one to slow you down and the other one to do cool skids, which are quite cool. Always fun. Yeah. That said, fixie riders who've got just one gear that's fixed, which means they have to pedal all the time, are proof that you do not necessarily need to have brakes because they still have the ability to do cool skids and only a few of them have embarrassing crashes. Yeah, that's true. And as you spend more money on bikes, it does make cycling a little bit easier, but not as much as you might hope. The more you spend, the smaller your returns on investments are. However, it is not a crime to own a nice bike to want a nice bike, or indeed to save up for a nice bike, whatever your level as a cyclist. Uh, moving on, male cyclists shave their legs entirely for image. It's nothing to do with performance. You can be a hairy, fast bike rider, or just hairy. Mm. And moving on to clothing, Lycra, it's not necessary, but it is comfortable and fast. If you do invest in Lycra cycling shorts, then make sure to wear the chamois on the inside. Yes, otherwise the giggling still does go on, yeah. unfortunately, doesn't it? Uh, next up, slipstreaming or drafting, so being behind another rider, is one of the most important things that you can learn because it makes life so much easier. In fact, I think that's the biggest difference between a new cyclist and an old-timer. The old-timer will always be behind another rider because they know how much benefit there is. However, if you are always glued to the back wheel of another rider, people will end up hating you. Just ask her, Alejandro Valverde. It's a bit catty. Mm, I know. Uh, moving on, saddles. As the old saying goes, bigger is not always better. Huge, wide, incredibly padded saddles always look the most inviting. But find one that fits your own backside perfectly and you'll be able to ride in comfort for hours. 
That's true. And another one is pedals. The most comfortable and efficient pedals are called clipless pedals. Although you do clip into them and yep, we know it doesn't really make any sense. But if you do try and use them, be prepared to fall very embarrassingly at least a few times before you get the hang of it because um, they are quite tricky to twist your foot and then clip. They are, yes. And we try not to giggle at that because it can be quite painful. Yeah, can't it? we've all been there though. I missed the beanbag. Uh, so those are a few of the things that might help you get into the sport in the first place, but what about some of the complicated terminology? Well, we'll start with a word called peloton. Now, it's a French word which literally translates to small ball. In cycling, it basically means the largest group of cyclists in a road race. However, no one knows the precise number of cyclists that need to be in a group for it to become a peloton rather than just a group. A cassette is not just a piece of audio equipment from the 80s or 90s, they are also the cogs that are located in the middle of your rear wheel. The bigger the cog that your chain is sat on, the easier your gear will feel. On the other hand, your chain set, which is the cogs in the middle of your bike, the bigger cog you're in, the harder gear you'll be in. Mm. Nipples are small things that you twist anti-clockwise to tighten your spokes or clockwise to loosen them and that will help you keep your wheels straight. And then you've got bonking which is probably not what you think it is or what you might want it to be. It's actually something uh, you definitely don't want to do and the harder you bonk the worse it is. It is, yes. Now bonking is where you completely deplete yourself of all energy. You do not want to bonk. Bloody awful. Can confirm it is. You can avoid bonking by consuming carbohydrates and fueling your body correctly and taking things such as energy gels on board. You can. Now that is by no means a comprehensive guide to cycling technology. Unfortunately, we do not have time for all of it. However, that does bring us nicely back round to Killian Kelly. Uh, he is now less than a month away from his attempt to get round Le Tap du Tour. And as such, he's just done a practice event. And he found out something that he'd wish he'd known a little bit sooner. There is such a thing as uh, consuming too many energy gels. So uh, yesterday I did the Wicklow 200, which was 200 kilometer sportive around the Wicklow Hills, just south of Dublin. And I think it's probably Ireland's premier sportive event. And uh, so it's actually longer than the Etap. The Etap's 170 kilometers. This one was 200. Now it only had about half the amount of climbing meters in it. I mean, it was still hard, but it, it, it wasn't as hard as the Etap is gonna be, but it's great just psychologically to have done more than the top distance so now I can stop worrying about the actual kilometers the amount of them and just worry about the type of them which is mostly uphill so I uh, but just yeah great great to have that um, ticked off now so I can stop worrying about distance and uh, but it was a great day out I uh, you know I had my GCN costume on and uh, people were loads of people were coming up to me saying oh you're the guy that's doing the tap saw the YouTube video last week fantastic you know, fair play to you. And got speaking to loads of guys who have done the attack before and are planning to do the do the attack um, this year. And uh, yeah, it was quite heartening because um, I, I don't know. I was talking to a few guys who uh, <clears throat> were a bit heavier than me, and and we're still planning on doing it. So um, yeah, it made me really feel like you know I, I can actually do this. And, and uh, you know, the, some of the guys that were doing the attack, you know, didn't do yesterday's. 200 kilometers any quicker than me so it was uh, it was great so um yeah a few lessons learned i need to i need to get up earlier in the morning on the day of the attack because I, I actually missed the start of the wickle 200 i was about 20 minutes late to the start line just faffing around just getting things organized so i'll uh, i'll have to remember that on the day and um yeah fueling i i uh i mean i had enough fuel but i don't know the, the type of food that i have was uh i had a lot of gels which um, which meant for the last two hours, I was just really, really focused on trying not to shit myself. Gives great clarity of mind, you know, when uh, when that's what you need to focus on. It kind of took the pain away from my legs because I was very, very much focused on, on the other task at hand. So, uh, I got there. I didn't didn't have any accidents ultimately, but uh, came very close. So that's another lesson learned. I think. I think I'm going to be getting a bit of a lesson on uh, nutrition and fueling from uh, another big name in Irish cycling in in a couple of weeks' time. So uh, yeah, I think I'll need that because I don't really want to myself and up to us. Oh dear, Killian. At least you just about held it in, eh? 
I'd like to say that's a mistake you'll only make once, but quite frankly, I would be lying. Uh, now, a video for you this coming Friday is from a woman called Otley Quince, who is one of the most inspiring characters we have ever met. So inspiring that we actually made a GCN Plus film about her that you should really go and watch. But currently, right here, right now, she is embarking on a ride from the UK to Mallorca to raise money for the Urology Foundation and UK. Which is the Urology, Cancer and Research Education. Cheers, Dan and Manon. It's going so well so far. Day four of the London Square OQ Vuelta at Casa. We're somewhere between Belgium and Holland on the way to Maastricht. And yeah, going really well. Been a bit stop start today just because we're going through towns and cities. Lots of really, really cool cycle paths. I can't believe the infrastructure for cycling in Belgium. Absolutely incredible. And the drivers are so considerate. Thumbs up to Belgian riders and Belgian drivers. Love it. So we're raising money for two amazing charities, the Urology Foundation and UCARE. They do fantastic work to research various diseases and cancers. And they're my two cancer surgeons charities. So any support will be incredible. Follow me on social media. And if you want to join in the ride, please come along. We've got 17 days to go. The team are doing amazing. Simon, Patty and Kate, Kate in the car. She's been tour manager. Fantastic. Anyway, thanks for the support. Ciao for now. Thank you very much to Otterly and we'll continue to check in with her over the next few weeks. As we said though, there's a video coming out on Friday where she's joined by Hank for the first leg of her epic ride. And as the saying goes, things can only get better from <laughs> Yes, <there. laughs> yes, I love that. A bit of peace and quiet after Hank left. Right, let's move on to cycling shorts now. And we're going to start off with the Tour Divide, which kicked off at the weekend. Yeah, this is one of the big ultra endurance races on the cycling calendar, taking the riders from Alberta in Canada all the way down to the Mexican border by the spine of the Rockies. 4,400 kilometres with 45,000 metres of ascent, which is pretty mind blowing. The weather has been pretty awful so far, but again, it's only going to get better, hopefully. We have been keeping an eye at dotwatcher.cc for regular live updates as well. And we're keeping a particularly close eye on GCN Plus regular Josh Ibert, who currently sits in fourth, at least whilst we record this. Now, it's going to feel like there's a bit of an epic theme to this week's GCN show because we're going to move on to the Race Across America, which also starts this week. And for the first time ever, We've got a GCN team on the start line. We do, but unfortunately, all the GCN regular presenters were quite yeah. busy at the moment. But fortunately, Mark Beaumont stepped in. I know. Yeah, Man and I were going to do it. We had to go to a blooming festival yeah. in Austria instead. Can you believe it? But yes, round the world record holder, Mark Beaumont, ably assisted by former UK time trial champion over 24 hours, Jonathan Schubert. Incredible. I mean, I think they'll do almost as well as we would have done. Had we yeah, done it, probably just about. Uh, last Sunday, we put out a video which showed some of the preparation that those two have done ahead of the race across America. And safe to say that was also next level compared to what you would normally see on GCN. So much so, they're not just aiming to complete it or win it, but they actually want to set the outright record. Which is going to be no mean feat. Because as Neil Moss put in the comments, a bit of context and kudos for the existing record holders. Jean-Luc Perez and Evan Stevenhart rode 3,082 miles at an average speed of 19.85 miles per hour in 2019. Uh, Stevenhart is a wattage bazooka recipient for his record ride at the Le Mans 24 hour velo race in 2017, where he rode 590 miles in those 24 hours. Uh, now moving on, there were loads of fantastic comments under Manon's recent video in which he followed in the tyre tracks of Tessie Reynolds, one of the world's trailblazing cyclists. In 1893, Reynolds set the record for riding from London to Brighton and back to London again in an incredible time. However, she was never credited with that record purely because she was a woman. Uh, now, that was a great video, I've got to say, Manon, so please do check it out if you haven't done so already. But there were loads of brilliant comments underneath it. This one from Channel Bill stood out, though. He suggested there should be an annual self-supported ride or race to commemorate Tessie, which I think is a fantastic idea. So someone take it on, make it happen. Women only, September the 10th, the Reynolds, t the Tessie Reynolds LBL 120. That would be very cool if someone could make that happen. Yeah, it would be. Mm. And it's also nice to see a few people in the comments last week putting you and Sai in your places. 
as as per usual. As per usual, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> you said last week that you'd like to make a living out of cycling without actually having to win. Mm -hmm. And um, to which John Twist pointed out that you have already done precisely that for the Cervelo test team. And on size power meter video, Jim Hansen said that he couldn't possibly take cycling advice from someone wearing orange shoes with red and black kit because it's the dictionary definition of a clown. Yeah, thanks for that. You lot are nothing if not insightful and factual, I guess. Right, let's finish cycling shorts off this week with the news of a seven-year-old that is raising money for a charity by riding from London to Paris on the 6th of July. He is. His name is Rupert Brooke and he's raising money for the Children's Bereavement Centre, which basically helps children who've lost loved ones or people they were very close to. And unfortunately, Rupert lost his dad uh, who died a few years ago when Rupert was just four years old. And since then, the Children's Bereavement Centre have been really helping Rupert, but also his mum Jess with their loss. And Rupert wanted to give something back to the charity, which is why he is riding from London to Brighton. And he is the youngest person ever to attempt this, which yes. is phenomenal. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, also phenomenal is the amount of money he's already raised. Mm. Just looking at the website, over £6,000 to date. But we can do better than that, can't we? If you would like to donate a little bit more, please head to the link which is in the description just below this video. Good luck, Rupert, with your ride and your fundraising. Good luck indeed. Uh, just before we finish Cycling Shorts, a quick promotion of what we've got coming up for you on GCN Plus over the next week. More racing than you can shake a stick at with the tours of Switzerland, Slovenia and Belgium, plus the Route d'Occitanie, amongst other races. Uh, this week's documentary release, though, is a must-watch. LA local and former pro Racine Bahati uh, takes us around his local roads and his local hood in the latest of our Heartlands films. With a backdrop of Los Angeles, the film is as cool as you might think. So here's a little uh, teaser to get you in the mood. Before the day was up, I wanted to visit one last place. After descending Griffin Park Hill, we were headed up Mulholland Highway to check out LA's most famous landmark, the Hollywood sign. You've been all, a lot of different places. Why settle here in, in Los Angeles? You go to Spain and you see all these beautiful climbs that all the pros do, but then like you come back home, you get settled and you realize that you have access to all of it. Yeah. And one of the, the best things I love about living in Los Angeles, you know, it's so fast paced, there's so much going on, especially when you're in the city, but this is our escape yeah. and then we take an hour or so and we ride up into the mountains and it's peaceful it's quiet sure. you can overlook the city you're just like we literally have it all you know it, it's expensive you know <laughs> but, but you it's, gotta pay to play you gotta pay to play <laughs> but it's definitely worth it and you know i've seen so many people i've you know i had a talk with garrett thomas one time he was riding through here and he's he loves it he yeah. loves training out here before, you know for his early january camp mm -hmm. you know of uh, chris Froome. uh Sagan, like all these guys are coming here, it just shows how amazing it actually is. Hack forward slash bodge of the week now, starting with this from Scarrett356. Uh, don't throw old inner tubes away, instead, they make great tree or plant supports. And rather neat looking ones as well, by the looks of it. Right, that. Do you know what? I couldn't even get the little post in the ground to, to do the supporting in the first place. That's how useless I am around the garden. I'm just about mowing the lawn. It's not strong enough. I do like mowing the lawn, I do it quite regularly. Oh, uh, but I go hack for that. Any way of reusing rather than throwing away inner tubes is good with me. Yeah, I'm going to go hack as well. Uh, as did 91% of you. Mm, next one from Ivan. Double brakes, double seat post, death on wheels. <laughs> two sets of brakes, two, two seat posts, two handlebars and a bunch of zip ties equal one steaming pile of poo emoji. <laughs> yeah, of Killian I mean, Kelly, I, I, we could call it. <laughs> uh, I can't see two seat posts, I presume you mean two stems. Uh, now, normally I will forgive the double stem, even though it can be quite dangerous if not done properly, because people do have bad backs. Uh, that said, given that there's a much lower handlebar and hand position option there, the person that's riding it surely can't have that bad of a back, and so I'm immediately saying bodge. I'm going to say bodge, I'm not, I'm, I just can't, there's just too much going on for me. It's just a bodge because there's yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, there's too much going on, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, 80% of you voted that one a bodge. Next up, Cowrec, co uh, used wires to keep chain from dropping, travelling to the Tap event in my country. 
and picked, uh, packed my bike in the boot of my car as I don't have a bike bag or a roof rack. Chain keeps dropping behind. So I found some wires, tie the chain to keep them in place and remove them when assembling the bike back together. Uh, now I'm gonna go with who, how the audience have voted first in this one because 64% of people have gone with bodge for that. My first inclination was that that was a hack. I, I would say hack as well. I just wonder whether whether some people thought maybe you could scratch your frame or scratch the chain rings or something, but Possibly. you're more likely to scratch your frame and the chain rings with your chain flapping all yeah. over the place in a bike box or bike That's bag. That's true. Because yeah. it does come off, doesn't it? Mm. Well, I'm going with hack. Yeah, I'm go I'd go hack You're, as well. You better go and vote on the app so that it evens things up. Yeah. In that hack favor, because, <laughs> Everybody like hack I said, 64% went with Bodge. Next one is in from David Palmer, 866. Uh, 2022 GCN, WD40 is not lube. 2015 GCN, Cy Richardson, Cy, Cy Richardson says using lube is okay. Yes, he did, didn't he? I mean, he did get a lot of crap in the comments back in 2015, to be fair, as well. But uh, I think when GCN does a social media post saying that WD-40 is not lube, it just makes Cy si look stupid as he just was. bringing things back really, from the past it? to haunt him. Uh, we'll have 30% with hack, 70% with, with bodge, uh, but it's neither, really. Is. Well, I guess it could be a bodge using WD-40 as lube yeah. and degreaser. Uh, this one came in from Silver Stehorak. Cadence sensor. I got a Wahoo cadence sensor, but the factory mount required a zip tie. I went with a piece of inner tube instead, which is far neater. And actually, this is a hack which is used regularly by pro team mechanics for the transponders on the team forks, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it looks very neat. Does. Big fan of that. Definitely yep. a hack from me. And a hack from me, and a hack from 97% of you. One of the most wow. unanimous pieces of voting on the hack or bud I've ever seen. Next one from Rock Dog123. One, one, Day three on the Mawson Trail finished. They sheared the rear derailleur, 70 k's into the Mawson Trail in South Australia. Uh, tape, zip ties and a stick gave me two granny gears. Removed the stick to adjust to get higher gears, held together for 400 k's of gravel. Impressive. Well, that's, I mean, it's the definition of a roadside hack, isn't it? Yeah getting yourself through when you've got no access to the necessary replacements, tools or shops. So I'm going with hack. Yeah, hack from me. 73% of you said hack, 27% bodge. Right, well that's the end for this week, but don't forget that next week's hacks and bodges are already there for you to vote on, but we would love for you to get involved. All you need to do is upload your hacks or bodges to the GCN app. It's now time for caption competition and uh, this is part of the show where you give us a witty caption of a photo you give us and you get to win an elite water bottle. This time it's a limited edition yellow one. Mm, they were very popular this they time were. last year so we decided to bring them back ahead of the Tour de France. So if you'd like to get your hands on one go to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com reasonably quickly before they sell out again. Right let's move on. This is the picture we had last week and Dan the winner the winner is Matthew Kayo or Sayo. Uh, caption, forget that POC TT helmet. This is what you need for sombrero gains. Rate that. Very, very good. Mm, yeah, I rate that, that a good. lot. Only got three likes. Can you believe it? Three thumbs up for that comment. Genius. Uh, well done, Matthew. Get in contact with us on Facebook and we will send that out to you if you give us your address. This week's image. Yeah, this one, Thibaut Pinot at the recent Tour de Swiss Stage 1. I'll get you started. Could you get me some of those bars that I've just seen featured on a hack forward slash bodge of the week on the GCN show, please? They look really comfortable. It's definitely what he's uh, saying there. Yeah, mm. exactly along those lines, I think. Uh, but as ever, leave your best captions in the comments section down below and we'll pick a winner this time next week. You can do better than that. Um, yes, of course. All right. Of course they can. Uh, <laughs> on to what's coming up on the channel this week then. And uh, we'll start with Friday, uh, sorry, Wednesday, where we're going to show you how to travel with your bike. As I've said before, I still dread packing my bike, even though I've done it multiple, multiple times. Because mm. I always think it takes me longer than it should do. Well, you, you did, did it for the festival the other day, didn't you? And I had a quick look in, in the bike box and it was quite neatly packed. Can I let you into a secret? Did you not do it? No, I did do it. Oh. But I did it on my return trip from Belgium in February. I just haven't got it out of the no. bike box. <laughs> yeah, you haven't don't, unpacked don't, it since don't, February. No, don't tell anybody though. I've been mountain biking, I just haven't been out on my road bike. Sure. Um, so yeah, 
I might suffer a bit in the, in the global oh, bike festival. Ollie's going to dish it out <laughs> to you. <laughs> yes, Ollie will drop me, that's for sure. On Thursday, we're going to let you know how to ride in the heat, which actually might be quite handy even for people in the UK this week because we are experiencing a heat wave right now. Uh, Friday, it's the aforementioned video with Ottilie Quince. And then on Saturday, we've got seated versus standing climbing. And then on Sunday, the Good Cheap Bike Challenge, um, where we buy three bikes on a strict £500 euro dollar budget and then race them in an elite race. And Ollie was feeling under the, under the weather for that, wasn't he? So That's he was replaced shame, yeah. by Mark Threlfall. So I'll be interested to see how he gets on. Mm -hmm. uh, right, thank you very much for watching to the end of the show. If you've got this far, we'll be back next week with the GCN Show.